Now the next topic that we have is traditional knowledge digital library. First of all, what is the need for this traditional knowledge digital library? What are the benefits out of it? Why was it required? Now to start off, you should know that this is something that has come out as a collaboration between CSIR that is Council for Scientific and Industrial Research Department of Ayush and Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Why did we need TKDL or traditional knowledge digital library? Now, when we talk about India, you know that India is a land of cultures. India is a land of many languages. Now, as we all know that it's not that every part of India speaks the same language. There are parts which speaks in Bengali. There are parts which speaks in Punjabi. There are parts in which speak in Kannada, in Telugu, in all these languages. Hindi has nine states, but even Hindi is not spoken in all the states of India. So that's why this knowledge which is there in one language or the other remains confined. So for this very purpose, this traditional knowledge digital library was thought of. That we will make a library, we'll get all the knowledge from all across the languages, convert them into languages which are spoken all throughout the world. For example, languages like English, German, French, Spanish, Japanese, etc. So this was the whole purpose that take the traditional knowledge, take the literature that is available in a local language and translate it into languages which are spoken all across the world as well. So that whatever knowledge is already available with us should remain with us so that people across the world should not be using this information without the permission of the rights holders. So this is the whole idea behind traditional knowledge digital library. So manages a database of knowledge existing in various local languages such as Sanskrit, Urdu, Arabic, Persian and Tamil. The database has also been converted by TKDL into five international languages in patent application formats. Which are these languages? English, French, Spanish, German and Japanese. These are the five languages into which they are being translated. So this basically ensures that the rich cultural knowledge that we have remains with us. It does not get misused just because the translation could not happen from this language to a language which is being used for patent filing all across the world. So this is the whole perspective that we need to understand with respect to traditional knowledge digital library. So let's have a look at some of the additional points. It becomes a tool that provides defensive protection to the rich traditional knowledge of India. The digital library is an attempt to consider unexplored potential for development, promotion and utilization of traditional knowledge which is unique endowment of India. It has created a sui generis system for protecting traditional knowledge through which traditional knowledge shall be safeguarded from misappropriation, shall promote further research and development in products and services based on traditional knowledge. There are over 2 lakh medicinal formulations that have been transcribed as of now and the database con is contained in 30 million A4 size pages. The next challenge for India lies in the use of its inherent strength in traditional knowledge by the way of effective promotion, development and utilization. So all these are some of the salient features of traditional knowledge digital library. What were the concerns that India was facing? with respect to traditional knowledge. First of all, the translations not being available, they being localized in one language or the other. That was one. Because of that, what was happening? That this local knowledge was being bought off or being misused by any organization, any company, even outside India and without any knowledge to the government of India because there was little understanding of the language. So that was one. Then apart from that, Examples that we have discussed, for example, the use of turmeric or neem or basmati, etc. that were patented in other countries outside India. Although this is something which was a part of our culture, a part of our historic learning. Then the fact that they are in non-patent literature or language which are not used in patents. This became a big hurdle to get the uh, intellectual property rights for these traditional knowledges. And this is something that can also be sorted with the help of TKDL. So that's why now with TKDL, the examiners of the patents will also understand what is being filed for and there will be no confusion with regards to the patents. Many a times what was also happening is that because this is in a local language, 
language which is not understood by many across the world they as i said could be misused and this misappropriation can now be stopped so this is all about traditional knowledge digital library so now what all have we learned in this chapter we understood the meaning of ipr we understood the need for ipr we understood the different kinds of iprs we understood the policy framework that we have in india some of the challenges that india has been facing with regards to iprs and then finally we understood what is the meaning of traditional knowledge digital library just understand that all these areas that we have understood all these could be specially important from your mains perspective but some of the key aspects especially what we saw in the first part of our chapter could also be important for your prelims examination as well so this is the end of this chapter thank you very much for being with us